The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. And three, two, one. We're live. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live. Uh, so, so happy to welcome you all to our fireside chat, the power of visual communication with Powtoon's very own CEO, senior internal comms advisors from staffbase.com, and me and Peter. I'm Nick Liebman, head of content here at Powtoon. And joining me uh, co-hosting today is Peter Malozzi, who is a uh, staff base value proposition consultant. Peter, hello. Hey, Nick. So good to have you. And of course, stars of the show, so happy to be welcoming with us as well today, Jeff Corbin, Staff Base Senior Strategic Advisor for Internal Communications Ooh. and Powtoon's very own Chief Executive Unicorn, Ilya Spitalnik. We're so happy to have all of you and, of course, everyone who is joining us today. Give us a shout out just so we can be sure everything is coming through okay. You can hear us. You can see the camera webcams, you can see the presentation, please let us know. And also let us know uh, what's been your biggest challenge, internal communications, dealing with the hybrid work situation, whatever it is that you in your day-to-day -day work have been cha challenged with lately, especially the last year. Let us know, let us know in the comments there. We'll say hello to everyone uh, and let us know where you're joining us from in the world as well. Uh, I'm here and as well is uh, Ilya in Pouchit's Tel Aviv office. Uh, Jeff and Peter, where are you guys located today? I'm sitting in Mamaroneck, New York, Larchmont, New York, which is like 20 minutes north of New York City. Amazing. Really, really and hot here today, humid. Yeah, and I'm here in Midtown Manhattan, uh, Right near Madison Square Garden. In the, That's the side of it. In uh, the kind of thick of things. Love it. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Jessica Lang who's joining us. Hello, everyone. She says, and anyone else there, please don't be shy. Uh, let us know in that questions box your name, where you're joining us from. But while that's coming in, I don't want to delay us any longer. I want to let, first of all, for anyone who doesn't know, who are we? Why are we even here to speak together? Uh, Powtoon. Powtoon is a visual communication platform. We empower individuals, teams, and enterprises to transform complex and scattered information into powerful videos and visual content with a professional look and feel. And Peter, tell us a little bit about StaffBase. Who are you guys? What do you do? Sure. Yeah. So we're an internal communications platform, uh, usually helping the internal communications team at companies um, to communicate out to employees. Sometimes it takes the form of an employee app that's branded to the company. Uh, sometimes it's even an intranet that the company uh, wants to use, which really has this mobile first flavor and approach. Um, and recently we merged with a company called Banana Tag. Uh, who helps internal communicators to do email uh, in a really effective and collaborative way. So we're, we're trying to bring together these different uh, aspects of the internal communicators' digital life and, uh, and help them get the word out. Amazing. Amazing. And it's never been needed more than right now in this moment. Also want to say hi to Jerry, who's joining us from Canada. Hello. Uh, happy to have joined from France. Valérie Doyen, welcome. So glad to have you all. And other folks joining us too. We had a couple hundred registrants and also hundreds of folks who are going to be watching and are watching right now on demand in the future. So welcome. And I want to just dive right in because Jeff and Ilya uh, have already spoken about a lot of these issues. In fact, this is something that comes up day to day for us at Powton. I know for you guys at Staff Base. I just want to begin our conversation today by posing a question. What is the biggest challenge facing businesses right now? How are companies improving the way they communicate to address it? Why don't we, Ilya, can we start with you? What is that challenge? What's the challenge you see businesses dealing with right now in this moment? Well, you see, the challenge that we have, you know, there's this beautiful saying, yeah? Um, what is Netflix's competition? What is Netflix's competition? You might think it might be Hulu, it might be Hola, it might be one of the other side. It's not, guys. It's sleep. Sleep is Netflix's competition. Now, what is our competition in terms of, let's call it, our staff and com com what you know? What is our staff looking at? What are they doing? 
tell you what it is. It's TikTok, it's Snap. That's our competition. And so, like, we're competing for, the, for, for our staff's attention in a world where, you know, it, you know these delicious snack, snack-sized pieces of, of information are just there for them. Whereas we might be approaching them with kind of maybe legacy kind of communications. And that certainly from my standpoint is, you know, one of the biggest challenges, you know? But what do you think? What do you think, Jeff? I mean, yeah, for, for sure. I mean, attention is an issue, right? Spans are very, very limited these days. So uh, that that's definitely an issue. I, you know, I, I've been doing a lot of reading and researching on the, the latest generation to hit the workplace, the, the Generation Z. And my view is this is a real challenge. Um, this is a challenge for businesses. It's a challenge for the internal communications professionals. You know, these are these are young folks who were ready to, you know, go to work and then we're told stop right don't come in and so they never even know what it, they, they, they're here they are starting their careers and their careers aren't really starting in the traditional sense so you know there's a lot of issues surrounding these folks that um businesses are going to have to address as um the generation z and even millennials for for that matter you know start coming back to the office you know there's some serious issues wellness issues mental health issues and you know i i think being sensitive to that um, it's going to be really, really important. It's going to be a challenge because we don't even know what to expect and what these folks expect. Right. All right. Very true. Very yeah. true. And I think, uh, you know, that definitely resonates with what I hear from customers, from Powtoon customers, and also from other partners, uh, from other organizations, working with uh, people in all walks of business. Uh, I do think that's true. The generational divide, the, the way we're consuming uh, information and content outside of work versus at work and that mismatch, you know, for sure. Peter, wh what's our next question? Yeah, well, it's a world of, of mismatches, isn't it? Um, it just feels like uh, we've fractured into so many pockets and little pieces and little worlds, little ideas of the truth. Um, there are gaps all over the place. And so for companies, um, this question is about knowledge gaps, you know, trying to uh, build on that platform of getting attention in the first place um, in order to to teach something or have your employees to know something. Um, what's your perspective? Maybe we'll start with you, Jeff, this time. How are you or your clients addressing employee knowledge gaps? Yeah, I think I think it, it, it comes back to what Ilya was saying before. It's It's grabbing their attention right and, and being able to you know maneuver their attention in the ways that you want them to be thinking um you know people are right now they're everyone's getting their information from so many different places and i don't want to get political here at all because my the, what, what i what i tune into is could be very different than what you tune into Ilya. um but in in business you know we have goals um to accomplish so you know giving employees the the right messages um having a, a consistent uh framework of communication safe from leadership right like hearing from the ceo is is going to be uh is going to be really important and just consistent messaging um throughout so i think that that is is critical um you know for, from the outset i think like when you look at um specific industries say you know the, we do a lot of work um at staff base in the manufacturing industry where there are uh considerable numbers of we refer to them as non-desk workers i kind of coined the term deskless workers um you know the, the, these are folks that you know the the baby boomer generation is kind of retiring in this industry you have these new generations coming in so there's a need to to educate and to upskill them uh particularly in manufacturing that's something that we're we're hearing a lot about so yeah i mean just understanding the needs of the uh of the, of the individuals and, and and attending to them and being consistent yeah yeah, yeah. you know like I'm, I'm, I'm a big, big believer and fan of the apprentice model, 
meaning that, you know, especially in manufacturing, you know, let, imagine yourself being onboarded into a manufacturing job and you never met your, your, your boss in real life. You, nobody really showed you how to do this standing next to you. You have to, the, the, the new world of work has changed, um, you know, has changed everything. Like we, we really are in a new world of work. And it, in fact, you know, like, you know, we're talking about knowledge gaps here, people. But in reality, I think we don't even know what knowledge gaps are yet. You don't know what's happening in in about a year's time or in about like eighteen months' time when you're going to start seeing. Guys, did you hear about the guy? Like, this is just one of the changes that's happening in the world. Did you hear about the guy who's? Uh, th th there was a tweet going around about a San Francisco coder, right? who apparently is working five jobs full-time, fully employed, right? Because he's working remotely, right? He's working, he's coding, he's doing the minimum job, right? And he's working for five different companies. And until they catch on to what's actually going on, apparently, guys, he's on a 1.5 million salary run rate. Nice. <laughs> That's another job, you know, it's such an exciting industry to be in. Right? <laughs> what happened? People, look, not everybody is like that, God forbid, you know, people are good, right? They do their job. But, you know, you're left to your own devices when you're in a remote setting, right? And, um, and so many things are changing. Just imagine this guy, let's say, who, who might not be the most loyal of employees, right? <laughs> he leaves his job and leaves like an important knowledge gap behind. But in reality, a lot of job skipping, like the, the statistics for jo job skipping, and I don't want to just throw statistics out there, but people are in the, the remote world because there's like the relationship, the, the relationship with your employer is not built around, let's call it the, uh, the lunch table, right? Um, there is kind of, it, it's very tentative. It's very easy to break. And if somebody wants to skip jobs from one to the other, and then leave a few months later, which is exactly what's happening at the moment. You know, we also, interestingly, we have a very buoyant, you know, certainly the tech sector is very buoyant, right? And so it's quite easy to, to skip from, from one uh, IPO company to another. <laughs> so all of this is creating an environment where we as employers invest a huge amount into getting somebody up to speed. And then you know there's like, that might be you know, months of onboarding and, and, and of teaching and stuff. And then, there might be a period when they're really useful, three, four, five months, and then they might just decide to leave just like that. And then you're left with all the investment and now with a new knowledge gap, you know, a new gap of something that they have, you know, achieved in that period of time. So this is, you know, the reason why I'm going on about this is because we've recognized this and we've had a lot of customers come to us saying that this, profile is actually happening in their work life and we're building solutions to solve this you know but sorry i don't want to dominate the conversation i don't want to hog the mic sorry. yeah i i you know you you and i Ilya, we we've kind of debated this topic before um and you know i think you're you're looking at it from the perspective of what what can a company do to help itself when the employee uh, does leave, right? Which I think is critical. And can, is there a way to memorialize the knowledge that that they, you know, one that they were trained on, and two that um, that 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 the the intellectual historical information that it would be a shame, given the commitment and the investment in the person, that they should just walk away with without it. My my perspective is a little different, which is um, let's focus on how do we. Um, how do we keep them right? Like you're, you're right. People are, you know, just given the nature of the economy, the um, 
the the tightness in the labor markets, especially here in the U.S., it's very easy. You know, hey, I, I had a bad day at work. I'm just going to, you know, go. You know, I got three headhunters calling me. I'm just going to leave. Um, so what can we do as a company to help ourselves, right? Like we don't want people to leave. It, it pains us when people leave, you know, we, we, you know, you build relationships. So, you know, that's where giving, you know, to, to kind of think about what, what do these folks need? How can we make them really love their job? Well, certainly, um, give them more money. That that's always a starter. Um, but that's always not going to be the case. Um, you know, what are, what are the other things that we can do? Well, maybe appeal to their needs for technologies, giving them information the way they want to receive it, allowing them to be heard. And, you know, so those, those are just some of my thoughts. What do you think? No, but you, you, you just said, uh, you know, um, give them technology, you know, maybe that might be the case, but, uh, um, what I'm, yeah, yeah. I've, the, uh, yeah, sorry, no, sorry, no, I just wanted to jump in because uh, Anna Micah, one of our listeners, uh, actually wanted to wanted to jump in and get a, get a, drill down and get a little more concrete here. So, do you have examples of how to capture knowledge from those deskless workers, uh, or from anyone in any position, and to translate it into something that is engaging that captures interest specifically for this younger generation? It's a bit of how do you okay we've got the knowledge gap problem how do we how do we do this in a way that's also interesting vis-a-vis -vis that generational problem we identified as well what do you what do you guys say jeff we'll start with you but from your perspective what is it, how do you capture that knowledge how do you present it in a way that makes uh your employees feel a part of this culture that that they're motivated to stay and to grow inside the company and how do you also do it in a way that we keep that a very valuable knowledge expertise uh inside the company even if that individual leaves yeah so so i mean there are ways now um staff base offers several different types of solutions to solicit information which we as a company then can use uh going forward whether it be you know giving them a social like environment to communicate amongst each other to, uh, you know, to have the ability to ask questions to um, our CEO um, and to have our CEO, you know, responding in a authentic, transparent and instantaneous way. Um, you know, the pushing out of surveys to employees and, and asking questions like, how was your day? Um, you know, what could we do better? Um, that It's that sort of, but obviously then you have to be prepared to respond to it right and you know some companies that that we dealt with that we deal with it's you know they're a little nervous about this sort of interactivity if you will but you know what i would say is it's it's necessary it can't just be top down um you know a, a good combination of both you know getting information to the folks what we want them as an organization to 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 know about and to to learn from us but at the same time letting them feel heard um, and then reacting appropriately to what, what we're hearing. What do you think, Ilya? So, um, you know, also, uh, also, and, and, and uh, I have to warn everybody, uh, I'm going to be shamelessly plugging our product right now. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, because this is also a, a solution that, you know, and before I was so rudely interrupted, just answering the previous question. <laughs> It's, it's all about creating a relationship with your staff base. And you're absolutely right. Uh, Jeff, I, I never got the opportunity, you know, I was working a bit too slow. I never got the opportunity to say that under no circumstances do we want our staff to leave. And we have to do everything to keep them there. I was kind of, you, you know, I was pointing out the fact that, that you know, that might be difficult in this world, but, but I, I, you know, the reality is that you're investing so much in your staff. And then obviously you want them to love the organization and you want, the, you, you want them to stay with the organization. Now, what we found is that one way of building that kind of a relationship is by giving them something incredibly meaningful to do, which is very, very small, but incredibly meaningful, okay? This is, this is what happens. We have a, 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 and as it happens, it also answers the, the number two question over here, which is how do you retain employee knowledge? 
we have a uh, a product a it, it's not really a product it's more a process we call it journey by power two and basically what allows you to do it allows you to to stretch out the employee's journey in in a series of really exciting and interesting pieces of content what do i mean by that when you join an organization uh, certainly a powtoon organization and when i say powtoon organization i mean all of our clients we encourage our customer base to ask their um, their team members to create a short powtoon introducing themselves okay that little short powtoon that tells you about the fact that they like avocados and they come from a family, uh, you know, of three, you know, whatever it might be, is then taken and it's kind of parked on the side. But it's parked on the side for all of the other team members, so to speak, to view it. All of a sudden, you are encountering that, th that person in the way that they want to be encountered in a format, in a video format, which kind of we provide a studio in a box for you to do that in a video format that is very very snackable right that you you go and then you smile and you go oh i didn't know that john you know likes taking you know walk, cliff jumping or whatever i didn't know that i better ask him about that right and then and then you send a quick message saying john i know we've never met do, are you really a cliff jumper or is that or are, are you flexing right so, so all of a sudden these little pieces of uh interaction happen and these little pieces of interaction are so powerful especially in the absence of what we refer to as the water cooler moment maybe we can we can talk about that because in a remote environment that moment where you guys meet around like what I referred to as the lunch table, it just don't happen anymore, right? You're sitting there and it's very easy to feel alone in that setting. And Jeff, you even mentioned, you know, like the mental health crisis mm -hmm. that has been through all of that. Because you know what? When you're alone, you're alone. You know, you're alone with that, with, with whatever is inside of here. You know, no distractions. So that's just the first piece of the journey puzzle. Now, every quarter, you are prompted to leave a little, what we call quarterly review. In this quarterly review, again, you create a little powtoon, uh, you know, a short video about what you've been working on in the, in the last three months. Now, where this becomes incredible is everyone, every person and every, you know, department has their own character. So I'll tell you what happens. The, uh, you, you know, you'll be, so you'll watch a quarterly review, you'll turn it on, and all of a sudden you'll have, you know, um, you'll have a Harry Potter theme <laughs> presenting to you the journey of the business intelligence department over the last three months. And you're like, what is this? This is a quarterly review? And all of a sudden you're building a fun engage by the way building these things requires a team effort in the sense that okay guys what are we going to do this quarter or you know obviously you can build one for yourself you can build one. what are we going to do this quarter why don't we use the harry potter theme why don't we do this why don't we do pirates of the caribbean and and what we've tried to do is kind of condense all that into a studio in a box so it becomes like a drag and drop process. You just stick some cool music on, onto it. I mean, Nick <clears> is our <throat> champion, I have to tell you. Yeah. Nick has done things you wouldn't believe. He's done everything from the Oscars to, you know, uh, uh, I know his aunt, what is it, Aunt Meg? Aunt Anita. Aunt Anita, could you do her? <laughs> Sure. Well, you know, when Antonita shows up, she's so excited about everything the Pouto Marketing Department's achieved. And she so, meets Aunt Anita, who speaks like this just because, you know, we, we kind of have that process in our, in, in our company. What it does is it creates like a, a, a fun environment, even in a remote or in a hybrid setting, which is so incredibly important if you want to build. Yeah, look. 
I don't, I don't know how to relate to it other than company culture that really matters in 2021. Yeah, and, and I, I would just add that, you know, it, it, it's the fun things, right? Like, so um, when, when I started, well, actually it's every month, um, uh, we, we get these, we, we call them Coco Bots, and Coco is, uh, is the, uh, the company's dog based in Chemnitz, Germany. I've never met Coco because I've only been with the company for a year. But um, yeah, like once a month I get a Coco Bot and it basically is introducing me to someone that I haven't met before. So now that we acquired Banana Tag, you know, the, the goal is the Coco Bot is trying to match up people from staff base with uh, employees of Banana Tag so that we can get to know each other and then, you know, leaves it to us. But it's, it's, it's fun. It's engaging, right? It's like, <laughs> you know, it's just got to find the time, but it's, it's, it's an important, it's an important thing. And it's part of the company's value in, um, you know, in terms of how they treat employees and want them to interact. You know, Nick, can you just go back to the previous question from this one? You know, at the bottom, it says, how are companies improving the way they communicate to address it? I don't know whether companies do this, but I think companies are forced to do it and they have to. And that is, you know, Jeff, what you just described is exactly that type of like a moment of, of interaction that is created. Because in a company of 3,000 people, 30,000 people, 300,000 people, what are the chances that you will encounter somebody from Chemnitz, right? Or from Belgium or from an inter The chances are virtually zero. But these are the moments that actually create some kind of a brotherhood between, you know, between the employees, if that makes any sense. And you as an employer want to foster that with everything you got. Yeah. You know? And, and I, I think, you know, and also um, this is something that I've, I've, you know, been a big proponent on in, in consulting with a lot of companies on their internal uh, communications is, you know, leadership, you know, messages from leadership. So when you get, when you get into these big organizations, like for example, I, I was working with a very, very large hospital system. Okay. You know, maybe 50 different hospitals, clinics all around, you know, within a huge uh, territory. Um, there's no way that the CEO could go and get to know every single person in this 50,000 person organization. But you know something, there is this, amazing tool now called the video camera on the mobile on the on on the mobile device and how nice is it to you know to wake up in the morning to have the ceo of a company shoot a very very you know 30 second video of himself or herself saying you know you know i woke up today feeling really really good and you know why i feel really really good it's because i have the best team working for me and i know i can't see you all today but i just wanted to share my appreciation and thanks for the hard work that you do caring for patients every day you know you're you're critical to to, to this organization into the world and you know that it's that sort of interaction yes i'm not going to be able to meet the ceo uh face to face necessarily but i now feel like a connection with 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 him or her and i it's it's so easy and the platforms that exist um are are there to allow for that sort of communication to take place. So it's, you know, it's, it's an opportunity and, you know, it's just a matter of realizing that it's not too taxing in terms of time and money. So why not, and, you know? And it's another opportunity for me to do a shameless plug because we recently, <laughs> we recently released, do it, you know, do it, yeah, yeah. exactly that product, which is what we call Partoon Capture. Which is a is a like basically you just click it, you record your screen, you have your or yourself, you know, you have yourself in the corner, and you actually say a few words, and then you send it to 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 your audience, and it's it's such an important thing. Uh, look, not not everybody can do it. Not everybody loves to be in front of the camera. Certainly, not everybody has something to say every day. I, I certainly don't. But you know, um, it it needs to be done uh, as part of as part of the new world of work, especially where, you know, Gen Zs and, uh, and, and also millennials, they, they are choosing their jobs much more around, you know, first, the, obviously the impact that they have, but also, you know, kind of the vision that they are working towards together with the company, you know, meaningful stuff. And the only way that you can convey meaning is if, 
the person at the top and the people at the top kind of make it clear that this is the meaning, uh, you know. I want to just I want to just jump in uh, if if I could with a comment from Monica who's in the audience. She says, as a millennial, I can tell you that it's been frustrating to not find a work life balance at various employers. I love remote work. So there's so there's all sorts of perspectives on remote work, and that brings us to our next question: What has been the impact of remote? and hybrid work, you know, a lot of a lot of companies are opening up, coming back, maybe partially coming back, coming back and on some other configuration. Um, what has been the impact of remote and hybrid work on how employees communicate? And also, by the way, Monica, if you wanted to jump in with an answer to how has working remote changed the way you uh, communicate with your colleagues? And we'll throw this at, at uh, Ilya, please tell us, how has the remote, specifically the remote piece, changed how people are are communicating. How have we seen that? So, so look, look, there's there's something that, and I touched on it before, and that is that is really missing, and that is why office work is really important, and that is this, you know, what what my COO refers to as the serendipitous moment of when you guys meet in the hallway or around the water cooler. And you solve a problem that would not have been solved in, in 15 Zoom meetings, right? That, that is truly missing. Uh, it happened to me just the other day. You know, there were six of us standing around, you know, the, the proverbial water cooler in the office. And, and it really brought a solution that we could not have done if we, if we, we had been remote. And that needs to be uh, like taken into into consideration, right? The, that this cannot be replaced, and it's going to cost us, and it's costing us. Right? At the same time, we need to facilitate, uh, you know, short, sharp messages because nobody wants to consume long, boring stuff anymore. We we agree on that, right? We can we can you know even you know I, I mentioned Netflix earlier. Even when we watch Netflix, do you know what we do at the same time? Yep, we scroll TikTok during the same time. That means that you know we, we want that snack by pieces of, uh, of of content of interest, and and we as employers and we as communicators need to adapt to that, right? And and so this we need to create an environment where it's easy to create that type of stuff. Yeah, Jeff. What do yeah, you think? I mean, I, 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 what do I think? Um, I think that uh, there's a lot, a lot to talk about here. Um, you know, certainly, you know, one of the, the thing that Monica said about work-life balance and remote. You know, I think you know from the employer standpoint, having been an employer, uh, you know, it's 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 a bit challenging, right? Because what does work-life balance mean exactly, and how can I mean it? It, it certainly means you know being able to work hard play hard right which um i guess you could do uh in either uh types of settings um but i i kind of you know i the thing that is you know that's troubled me a little bit and, and this is both generational and and also as a result of the pandemic and remote work is that you know here we are talking to each other through a computer screen and you know i really look forward to looking someone in the eye and you know having that fit because yeah yeah you see me here and you know but like do you really see me i mean you do um i think that there is th that that's something you know that you know and again i said it was yeah, i suggested that might be part generational you know like my my kids you know you got text messages it's very easy to just text someone or slack someone or message them somehow or another as opposed to picking up a phone and talking to them or walking out of your office and, and looking at them and having that that more genuine, authentic uh, communication. I think that that's where, you know, we, we can't we can't forget about that. There's something to be said about the way things were. Um, also recognizing that it's probably never going to go back to the way things used to be either. Um, and, and that's that's, I guess, part of the opportunity that also exists, uh, particularly for communications professionals. Um, you know the 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 pandemic uh, certainly 
forced, well, all eyes were on internal communications during the pandemic because we needed someone to, to look to for our information and for communications. Um, great opportunity, we did a great job. Um, you know, this, does this continue? And I think that, you know, th again, that, that is part of the opportunity is that the, we're not gonna go back to normal so quickly, but uh, you know, don't, 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 don't become too complacent. Um, I, I want to add to that, you know, like the we 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 mustn't forget that it's, and I mean, even in this environment, that that visual, uh, the, like the visual part of our communication is is suffering, meaning that this what we're doing right now is is you know, I'm missing out on tons of body language cues. You know, I'm just about making out, you know, I, I hear a digitized version of your voice. This form of communication, is, it's, it's amazing because it's what we have. Thank God that we have it because mm -hmm. otherwise it would have ground to a, to, a, to a halt. But we mustn't forget that, you know, there is, that we need to synthesize and create, um, you know, like an environment where, where we can, you know, fill in the gaps, and these are not necessarily just knowledge gaps. These are these are also gaps in creating feeling, in creating togetherness, in creating. And you know what does that better than anything? I mean, movies, films, videos, sh short clips, even. You know. And so I'm saying that the the use of video needs to be. We need to be a little bit more sophisticated in. in use of video it has to be easy to be done but like on a psychological level you have to understand the impact you know a, a little while ago i asked myself you know you we, we started out as a, a company that creates you know or that allows you to create short animated clips be the whiteboard or whatever we we created a the, our our theory was if we take um something like powerpoint and make it as easy as PowerPoint, but actually give you the power of creating a movie, like a movie studio in a box, yeah? Then, mm -hmm. then it would uh, do something, like it, 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 would, it would achieve something, and we were kind of a pioneer in that field. Now, what was interesting is that it became much, much more, and much more um, popular than I thought. And where, specifically? In internal communications and corporations, why? I ask myself, why? What, what's going on here? Why are people relating to this? And the only thing I can come up with is two reasons, okay? One is if you're using this kind of, let's call it, uh, you, you know, abstraction of reality, where you're turning a human being into, into you know, a two-dimensional Homer Simpson, let's say, right? All of a sudden you are, you're taking away a lot of prejudices that we have when we see another person. Because after all, you know, what can a cartoon character do to me? The other thing is you're tapping into kind of the, the, your, the, let's call it the feelings of your youth. When you were innocent and you were still looking, you know, at, at your, your Saturday morning cartoons, you were watching your Saturday morning cartoons, you know, with no, uh, with no guile, with no, no secondary emotions, you know, and um, all of that stuff, like all of these kind of psychological triggers are coming back now when you're, when you're working in a remote environment, you know, I, I wish if I sent you, I would really like to demonstrate, I mean, we can, we, we, we can scream, you know. Can't we demonstrate, you know, like what I'm what I'm relating to? You know, like, like is it possible? Can you yeah, uh, yeah. if I share here with you on Slack? Yeah, send me something, Ali, and I'd be happy to I'd be happy to share it with uh, with everyone. Okay, good. The, the the one thing I would want to just you know you you talk about video and we Peter and I have been spending quite a bit of time you know thinking about data and you know video content and written content and what what is um 
you know, what is most engaged, what, what is more engaging than the other. And so, you know, be, because we have um, at staff base, I, I guess over a million uh, people that are using the platform, um, one of the things that, uh, that I've really taken an interest in and Peter's, you know, has as well, is looking at, you know, what sort of video content is most engaged with? How long uh, of a video, you know, should how long should a video be? And you know, from a from a content creation standpoint, knowing answers to these sort of best practices, I think is going to be so is going to be so critical uh, going forward, particularly as people start to rely more on video creation, video content, which they are. But you know, if we had you know, rules to, to, to play by and to say, okay, if a, you know, the average person drops off of a video after one minute and 13 seconds, okay, well then maybe that's really important. So we don't need to create 10 minute videos anymore. Maybe we'll create eight, one minute, 12 second videos and then we know that we we haven't captured but yeah that's that's something that given the the data that we have available to us in a non-personal way obviously being sensitive to personal information to be able to look at these sort of best practices and to you know to report back is something that we're working uh pretty hard on right now at staff base i'm really excited about uh, eventually being able to share that with the ic internal communications community okay. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, if you if you get me going, if you get me going about, it, I'm gonna start bombarding you with stats that you should, your video should not be longer than 87 seconds. And that, <laughs> right. That there is a, a, a um, you know, like paradox. You know, I actually refer to it as a paradox because we we binge watch Netflix for what six hours on end. But really, I can't get you to concentrate on something that I'm saying to you for longer than 24 seconds. Do, do right. you see what, there's like this attention paradox going on? If you don't mind, I'm going to hijack this just for a moment. I want to show you something. You know, I mentioned that when, when a new Powtoonicorn, that's what Powtoonicorns are called, on board in, into our company, they actually share with us, you know, like a little Powtoon about themselves. Everybody has to do that. And Nick, can you just go through and forward? And I think the one that I'd like you to show is the one from um, uh, Stefan, Stefan Taguchi, okay? Because mm -hmm. that will be out of the water. Just because it was so unexpected that he was descended from Caribbean Jewish pirates, okay? <laughs> I would never have known that about this guy a little bit more, a little bit further on. Bit further I'm getting there, on. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Uh, I was, there he is. Okay. I just, we have sound on this as well, because mm -hmm. that we need to have sound on this because otherwise, the, this is, the, the, just picture the following, okay? I'm the CEO of an organization. Now I do have 90 seconds. I have, I can, I have 90 seconds of my time. And uh, you know, there's, let's say, hundreds of people in my organization. But you know what? These 90 seconds, I can invest in, in actually watching this in order to know something about my new employee. Uh, and and, and the, the opposite is also true. The employee has 90 seconds to learn something about me, the CEO, or about his colleagues around him. Nick, do we have sound on this? I'm going to do my best. I'll do my best. You'll see in a minute. Just play this video, just to show you what a Powtoonic on onboarding looks like and what a 2021 onboarding looks like in an organization. You don't really get the sound, Nick. It's not coming through. It's not coming through. Unfortunately, it's the best I can do on the fly. Sorry about that. Okay. 
In a remote setting, discover a team that you might not meet for four months, for six months, for possibly ever. So this is a really important, um, you know, aspect to the new world of work from our the, the, the way that we perceive it. Yeah, and, and you know something, it's it's we're always being asked about content and content creation. Um, you know, and there's the the old school ways that'll never go away, but you know something like this you know it's what's fun yeah. like you know we, we we have our fun facts like i'm a crossfit guy peter bakes bread you know we want to share that kind of cool stuff with 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 our uh, with our teams right but you know you know what was so charming about this this particular cartoon it was so unprofessional it was just something <laughs> smooth thrown, and it doesn't matter yeah. because the the um you, you know, you, you see the awesomeness of the person. That's really what it's, guys, this is it. I just hit it. This is what our job is in internal communications and in anything else. And that is to bring out the awesomeness in the staff member, in the team, in the, like, give them a stage to be awesome. I yeah. think I just... Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. This, this, the, this is kind of like this question here. Um, it's kind of my soapbox opportunity. So, I, how much time do we have left? I, I won't oh, take it all. Uh, I, we, promise, I promise. I won't, I won't. I won't use it all. But, but here, here, here's the point. Okay. So, you know, you go into these large organizations, which we work with in in many instances at, at staff base. You know, a thousand employees, fifty thousand employees, five hundred thousand employees. Um, that's a lot of people, right? And are you actually reaching all of them? Okay, because I can tell you in more, more instances than not, um, there are audience members, people out there that are not privy or not, um, do not, have essentially been disenfranchised from, from information. Why? Because they're not sitting in front of a computer. Okay, so certain things, certain tools, you know, if I don't sit in, at, in an office setting, I'm not going to have the ability to receive this, um, necessarily receive certain types of content. So, you know, understanding the, um, the landscape of your employee communications application uh, technology stack, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new market. There's a lot of players in it from the platform standpoint, staff base is one. You know, and it's, you know, the, the, the goal is how can we create a way so that content can be disseminated to all employees and know that we're getting to all employees. And, you know, I think that that's, that's a, that this is an issue that um, I've been talking about because, you know, even, for example, I'll just, uh, you know, Microsoft, you know, many Microsoft organizations, um, you know, do, do companies necessarily buy uh, licenses for their, or for all their employees, particularly their non-desk employees? No, they don't. So therefore, Outlook is not a channel to get them information. Some of the, you know, SharePoint teams, you know, is not a channel. So, you know, how can we, you know, make information content available? Um, the the reality is is that there is an opportunity to do that that's what mobile's all about everyone has a mobile device so if you can just find the right solution that will you know allow you to disseminate to everyone then you then you're in a really good place yeah i mean uh, of course you know it, well, what's very interesting is that that when we speak to our uh, our larger uh, customers uh, you know, the multinationals, the, the, the companies that just merged, for example, they say, listen, guys, um, by the way, uh, you know, we say, why don't you send this out on uh, Slack? 
So they go, oh, we've got 15 teams in the organization that do not use Slack. They use, uh, you know, and, and they have they have a hold on Slack. That means they've given our internal comms department instructions not to communicate with them via Slack or via email. They will only respond if it's sent in a certain way, you know, Microsoft Teams, for example, or or some other way, right? And uh, and so you are sending out a message to you know considerable amount of people. Firstly, you don't know whether it reaches them, right? That's the first thing. Second thing is once it reaches them, does it even you know like do they even take it in, respond? Is it in a format that they can absorb? And and that's really you know the challenge of 2021, 2022. If you want to build a relationship with Gen Zs, for sure, for sure, millennials also. But if you want, which is the bulk of the workforce now, if you want to build a relationship, you better start understanding, you know, uh, how how they how they need to be served. They don't, you know, they need and they need to be served in a, in a way. And, and it's job as employers. To serve them in the way that they they need to be served, right? And on that note, there's actually we had, a, we had a question from Paulette. So no, I sorry to jump on your uh, step on you there, Jeff. No but problem, the, no uh, this is a timely point that Jeff is raising. I think both of you guys were speaking about, uh, and it's of great interest to my organization. This is from Paulette. Uh, will you share some channels that you're using to reach those non-desk employees or those millennial and and Gen Z employees uh, that are not issued by the company? Uh, mobile devices. Is there, is, is these, are you speaking specifically of staff-based channels? Are you talking about other applications or channels or, or networks or, or mobile device, the mobile apps? What are you talking about? Are you talking to me, uh, Jeff? Jeff? Yes, or? to Jeff. That yeah, was so, the question so, came to you. Yeah. Okay. So, so you know, if, if we're looking to um, get information to the non-desk worker and we're not providing them with a company mobile device, which in, in most large enterprise organizations that hire primarily non-desk workers, manufacturing, uh, retail, hospitality, trucking, logistics, these folks don't have company provided devices necessarily. So how do you um, get them to download a workplace app? So a, a solution like StaffBase is that channel. You know, you, you can have your own company's branded app available through which the company can uh, provide you with information, push uh, communications to you, as well as allow for two-way engagement between uh, company employee and employee and employee. But you know the 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 challenge is getting the folks to to download the app to uh, their personal device. Um, totally doable. You know it's going to come down to a couple of things. One is the messaging around why, like what what value is in this for me? Well, if it's all about giving them easy access, transparent uh, communications, um, giving them need to know content that's important to them, both in their personal life as well as to make their work more efficient and effective. If the communication around the why to download a mobile app, say to your personal device, if this is gonna bring me value, I will download it. And over time, especially if you do, then there, there's the engagement part of it, right? Like you could have contests and you can give out free things. And, you know, eventually people start to hear about like, wow, did you, you know, know that there is a, uh, you know, free cookies in the, in the break room? Well, how did you find out? Well, I got this app on my device, you know, my, you know, our company's app. Oh, how come I don't have that? Oh, I'll download it now. Uh, you know, right from the app stores. Um, it's, it's, it's just like any other app. So, um, I don't know if that answers the question necessarily, but it's also, you know, what I've seen, um, I've, I've been doing this employee app thing for a really long time now, um, since they pretty much started back in like 2013, 2014 in the United States. And um, it's such a big opportunity, you know, uh, to go directly to the individual, the end user. Um, and also to engage with them in a really cool, different, fun way, in a way that the millennials and the Gen Z, uh, the Gen Zers, you know, that they they will, can and will appreciate. Ilya, do you have you have any thoughts on this in terms of of reaching people outside of those main 
MS Teams or SharePoint or Slack channels? How do you get people who aren't on those main channels? It's a, you know, it's a difficult one, depending on, you know, I really, I really think that you need to be catering to every channel there is, uh, more or less, you know? And, uh, and, and the way that we view it is that when you have a piece of communication, you know, then you should be able to just have a tick, you know, a series of ticks of where you want to publish it. And that can also, uh, you know, include private communications or private communication channels, if that's your preference. You know, that's the only way that I can relate to that. Now, you know, um, that, that's a functionality that we are building ourselves, you know, for our visual communication platform. But I, I can't point you to a software that does that today. I mean, it, it, you guys at Starface, do you have that functionality yet? Peter, you want to uh, take that? You're clued in very closely to uh, the, the platform. Yeah, well, I mean, Ilya, this point that you make about trying to meet them where they are, that's really the the whole thing. And so we started, we got our start as a company by doing these company apps and by taking advantage of the personal device. So it's a big, a big shift, paradigm shift from a world where you used to communicate on company paper, used to communicate on company infrastructure, whatever that message was, it was carried through a medium, which was owned by the company. Now you have a world where there's a digital medium that's in someone's pocket, but it's personal. Um, and that's amazing because all of a sudden your reach potential goes through the roof. Um, because now you don't, you're not relying on the piping that you had to build to get there. Um, the piping comes to you because people want these things. They, they all have them in their pockets already, but it changes the power dynamic. Um, and at the same time, it's just one um, channel and it's not really about the mobile app. It's about the connection. It's about the communication itself. Um, it's, it's about that the communication is happening, that it's happening in a way that actually fits into the life. It has to fit, otherwise you won't get their attention. Um, so for example, we see at organizations, sometimes it's like our integration into Microsoft Teams for a certain segment, for a certain persona within that company, that's the essential way to fit into the life because they come into work and they open Teams and it's Teams all day. Um, but for the non-desk worker, that, um, company mobile app on the on the personal device that might be the only digital channel you've got um, and what we're trying to do and hence banana tag that we mentioned earlier uh, with email because email there's another one you have a certain persona who that's how they like to receive things and i think right. as communicators we need to think less about you know us and our channels and even as technology providers we need to think less about you know our channels and our features and blah 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 and we need to think more about the people that we're serving and you know, how can we get more agnostic on what the channel is and more precise about who are, what's the persona and how do we meet the need and how do we fit into you know, the life that they're really living. Absolutely. We're, run stuff. we're running very close to the hour here. So I just wanna, first of all, uh, we have a couple, we mostly covered actually earlier this question about onboarding and offboarding. Uh, processes, but uh, definitely that's something I think if folks want to reach out on LinkedIn to Jeff or to Ilya or to Peter or to me, just search us up and uh, ask and ask us and we'd be happy to elaborate further. Likewise, Michael, who asked a question that we're not going to have time to get to your question, Michael, but I really appreciate you coming and asking your question. And if you want to follow up with any of us on, uh, on LinkedIn, please do. We were also going to ask about predictions. Uh, again, very if we could do it very quickly jeff Ilya, we'll start with Ilya. what's your 30 second predictions for the for internal communications in the year ahead what are your predictions it's going to be visual that's all i'm saying it's going to be visual we need to leverage you know visual communications um uh, communications at home and at work are converging 
if we if we are you know scrolling TikTok here, then trust me, we'll be looking to do something similar at work. That's certainly my prediction. Amazing, Jeff. My 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 prediction is it's not over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let's not get complacent. Um, the, there's still um, a lot of work to do, and um, you know some people are saying that there's a kind of like they think that there's a straight line back to normality. No, I don't believe that's the case. There's going to be road bumps. Last year was the year of the internal communications professional. All eyes were on us. Um, I think it's an opportunity for us to for that to continue, uh, regardless of how things shake out over the coming you know six months here. But hopefully everyone stays healthy. Amazing. Yes, and I echo that. Our whole team does. I just want to mention, uh, and I'm going to put a link here in the chat, everyone, to both of these items. But here at Powtoon, we want to make sure that everyone has the tools they need to succeed in this year ahead, right? So the Future of Internal Comms and Managers Guide for 2021. Let me put that a link to that in the chat. Please check it out. There's practical uh, tips there. Boom to all, uh, all sorts of wonderful, uh, um, uh, there's even like video templates and other examples of things, uh, quotes from folks who have made this work for them at their organization uh, and tips for the year ahead. And I think also from the staff base side, uh, they're sending a link through here. You guys can go take this survey and yeah, it's, and, and I, I recommend anyone in internal communications, this is an assessment that is really eye-opening, can be really eye-opening and helpful as you um, start to think about the importance of internal communications as a business unit within your respective companies. Um, you know, great questions to analyze, you know, where you're at today, where you might be going in the future, and then to use that as a way to hopefully... Uh, you know, get more resources and all the things that we as internal communications need to do our job well. So amazing. Yeah, definitely take it. So it's 10 minutes. It's kind of fun too. Excellent. I love it. Nothing but value and resources for our entire audience out there as uh, we make communication more valuable to organizations, easier to engage with, more immediate, more mobile, more visual. Uh, I, you know, honestly, I have goosebumps. I think it's going to be a wonderful year ahead. And even if it's not a straight line to back to normal, we're forging a normal together. Uh, our colleagues, our, our, our partners, our, our managers and our direct reports, everybody is doing this together. So it's a really, really exciting time. I want to just thank Jeff. I want to thank Ilya. Peter, thank you so much for co-hosting. I want to thank everyone who asked questions, everyone who joined us, everyone who's watching us on demand in the future. Thank you so much. And whatever you need to communicate in this world, just remember, communicate visually. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your week and rest of 2021. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Peter and Jeff, as always, it's always Thanks, a Thanks, Ilya. Thanks, Nick. Bye, everybody. Peter, see you in the office, hopefully. See you soon.